Are you feeling right now that luck is that last ingredient you need to be successful in today's real estate market? That's exactly right. We're going to be talking about the luck that you might need or not need in real estate. My name is Lane. And I'm Scott. And welcome to another episode of the Orange County Real Estate Beat. All right, let's talk a little bit about luck. Let's talk about luck. Well, you know what? Let's start with a quote that's mostly attributed to Thomas Jefferson, which is the harder you work, the luckier you get. It's a combination of hard work and luck, however, to be successful today. I think that's embedded in my brain because my grandpa used to tell me that all of the time. But let's talk about creating your own luck and creating your own luck with what Thomas Jefferson was just saying. Absolutely. Hard work. Exactly. Let, okay. let's, let, let's address that. So a lot of the buyers are having some complications out there um, of, as far as getting offers accepted because it's, you know, a marketplace that seems to be favoring the sellers yes. right now. Or not, but I can talk about that at a different time too. Right. But it, it seems like anything that you're submitting an offer on has multiple offers and it's getting way outbid and, and you're just really hard to compete. But what are some of the things that agents can do? Yes, yeah, so we're talking about real estate agents that need to maybe step it up for their buyers out there. What can some things, what can some things that agents can do to step it up for their buyers to get an acceptance and create that luck for our clients? I think that's right on, Lane, and you hit it right on. It is, it is with hard work, and then, of course, there's going to be a little luck at the end of the day, but how do we increase the odds, and that is with the realtor kind of getting behind the scenes for you. Give us the top three things you think, Lane, that a realtor needs to do today to get that buyer into that upper tier of final offer. Sure, let's start with number one. I, I think that if you're only searching the actives or if your agent's only searching the homes that are actively on the market, that's doing a major disservice. We're actually having more luck looking at pendings and homes that are under contract right now. And let me explain to you why. Like, like, there are more homes probably under contract in your marketplace right now than there are active ones. Right, And that's okay. an important fact to remember because that's where you can go fishing. You want to go fishing in the area where you've got the most fish available. Now I know what you're thinking, like they're already under contract. Right. However, there's up to 30% of escrows are falling out right now. Stop. What's that quote? There's that stat? 30%. Up Crazy. to 30%. Up to 30% and, and depending on your marketplace or, or, or of escrows are falling out. Yep. So now when they fall out, there's less competition. That's right. So initially when you submitted the offer, there could have been 20 offers on it. Okay. Come a couple weeks later, those buyers, a lot of those buyers have probably already moved on. They might have found something already. They might have already given up on that house and they're no longer interested in that house. So now they have less competition. Right. Let's talk about that for just a moment too. You, you might be wondering, why is that stat? The housing shortage is crazy. Inventories are low. People should be so excited they got into a house. So what happens is emotion carries people away sometimes. They get into the bidding war. They end up perceiving they've overpaid for a house. They're the winner, winner, chicken dinner. And then they settle in a few hours later, 48 hours later, and say, oh my gosh, what have I just done? And then they start panicking. And that's what's causing these people to have some buyer's remorse and backing out again. Yeah, they make comments like, I paid this amount of money for this, and then they freak out and back out. Like, that's so, exactly right. So that's what we're seeing a lot of. So yeah. so yeah, just remember, if you're working the homes that are under contract right now, less competition, yeah. more available for you to call on. And when we're talking about luck, we just had this happen for some of our buyers here. We did. We, we called 28 homes that fit their criteria in Huntington Beach that were active under contract. Only one said, wow, this is we're about to fall out of contract, yeah. and we don't want to put it back on the open market. Yeah. We took a look at it that day, wrote an offer and got it accepted the next day. Yeah. So that part of it had a little bit of luck, but that luck wouldn't have come to us had we not put in the hard work and That's right. for the pendings. And you know what, Lane, let's, let's reverse engineer that luck as well, because you look to the listing agent on that property. It's getting shaky. They're getting nervous. They're trying to hold themselves accountable to the seller. The last thing they want to do is go back through that list of 20, 30 people that they had that wrote the multiple offers. How lucky for them when Lane or I pop in and say, we've got a ready, willing, and able buyer. Let us take a look at the house. Name your price. We're ready to step right in and take the place of this, the existing buyer. Again, that's reverse engineered luck for that listing agent. And it was a win-win because the sellers actually ended up getting an offer that was ten thousand dollars more than where they were under contract before, mm -hmm. and the buyers get an offer, uh, get an acceptance where there was no competition, and they get the house in the neighborhood that they really wanted. There we go. So that's that's number one. We got two more to go. That's it. So okay, the other one that we're going to talk about is we're going to be looking at old listings that never ended up selling, whether they were canceled or expired, you want to look between two or three years ago, yeah. your agents can do all the digging and pull that information and they can either door knock that home, They maybe they have access to public records where they can call the home if they're on the do not register, the do mm -hmm. not call list, uh, don't call that particular home, but if they aren't on that list, feel free to give them a call or they can send them a letter to explain that yeah. of what they're looking for. Now, we've been finding that a lot of homeowners that were interested in selling two or three years ago, they're still open to selling today, but they just don't know exactly where to go. But good news is, and this is a testament of one of our most recent listings, we had 24 offers on it. 
all 24 offers offer some sort of a rent back, whether yeah. it was two months, whether it was six months where most were winding up and then a handful were offering up to eight or nine months of a rent back, some of it for free, by the way. So that let's just use the most, the majority of where they were mm -hmm. coming in at six months. These homeowners that maybe didn't have any intent of selling today, but they did have the intent a couple yeah. of years ago. Now we can give them up to six months to find right. and secure their next place, which is a huge opportunity for them to be able to get a good price today. Right on, Lane. So I think the key here on, on item number two to create your own luck is research searching those homes that for whatever reason have not sold over the last two, three years. But the subtext bullet points for that are you need to first educate those potential home sellers as to what their options are, listen to their stories as to what they want, because oftentimes they can get everything they want and a buyer can still be successful. So it can be a win-win for both. Yep. And here's the importance of why we're looking at these old listings that were canceled or expired on the open market. At one point in time, they were motivated sellers. That's right. They had a reason why they put their home on the market to sell. That reason still might be valid today. And we just need to bring that back to light and make sure that the, they understand too, they, they, we're not coming from an ill place because we were trying to do everything we can for our buyers to find them a home. But um, we just want to give them options too to like realize, you know, prices are way higher than they were two or three years ago. They probably made 30 to 40% more than where they were last yeah. listed for, and we can get them that price, and they can continue on with their initial plans. And I've got a quick little story on that as we close out that item number two, and that is education. They don't know what they don't know. Perfect example, I own a pickup truck that I paid $45,000 for, and it's two years old. I got a call yesterday from a dealership telling me he would pay me $42,000 cash right now for that truck. I don't really need to sell the truck, but they then explained to me and educated to me on why the value is there and what's going on in the current resale marketplace for, for automobiles. So I learned something, and it did get me thinking about it, and I think that's our goal and that's our obligation to these people that didn't sell before. Yeah. Anything that any branch that we can shake for our buyers right now, anything that we can do to put in the hard work now to create our luck, we're going to do. And that's part, one yeah. of the steps that we're going to do. Okay, we've got one more point again. Number three, how to create your own luck. Number three, I, I would say networking. Yeah. Okay. So what you want to do, we're talk, you want to network with other agents, whether they're inside your office or not, because a lot of those agents will know of any listings that are coming soon, mm -hmm. any listings that are considered pocket listings. So sellers that may have had, may have had conversations with these particular agents saying, you know what, if I can get X price, I'd be open to being a seller. Absolutely. Um, and then also, you're going to want to net network with your own clients. You know, we have a database of almost 9,000 people. Correct. Right? So if we sent out, and we understand, like, you know, maybe some of the homes that they have and that they own, and we can, f like, cross-reference the criteria of what our buyers are looking for with what they own. And it's okay to, put, to come out with a call with some of our clients or some people in our database and say, hey, we've got a buyer who's willing to pay a premium for your home on 123 Main Street. You live in the exact neighborhood that they're looking for. Mm -hmm. If you've had any thoughts of selling, even if you don't know where to go, we can give you a six-month rent back. That's a, oh, that's a good call, too. So your agents need to network with the other real estate agents inside their office and outside the office, and the clients and data people that are in their own circle. Exactly. And it's just being willing to get out there and communicate. There's a common theme to all of this, and it's the agent must be willing to get out there, talk to other people, engage, interact, ask questions, educate. So let's recap those top three before we wrap up. Lane. Sure. How to create your own luck. Go, go for the ones that are under contract and pending. Okay. One. Work those. Work the ones that were previously on the market that might have since canceled or expired. And network, network, network. Your agents need to do all of these three things, okay? It's not... It, like there's, we are not in the day and age as a buyer's agent where you're going to set a safe search on the multiple listing service, kick your feet up and allow and just wait for the buyer to say, I want to see this one. Let's write an offer on this one after you see it. That's, right. That's not going to work anymore because you're competing against a ton of people. I was just showing a house in Quail Hill and Irvine, there's only one home for sale in all of Quail Hill right now. Crazy. It's right. Crazy. So the fact that like that, that one hill, that one home, there's going to be yeah. tons of people chomping at the bit to get at. So the chances of getting this accepted is going to be really low. It's mm -hmm. not impossible but I'd rather be shaking all the branches I can that I like where we don't have this kind of competition. Well, I think, and then wrapping up today from where we started with the quote from Thomas Jefferson, again, the harder you work, the luckier you get. You can see here, there's calculated hard work to put our clients in a position where they're at the top of the top. The, they may not be number one, but if we can get them in the top three, that's going to increase the odds and make them a little bit luckier when the seller is making their decision on who to go with. Exactly. And now let me just tell you, these were just three steps. We yeah. have a checklist of eight. 
Okay, so we could have gone on and on about this. So like if, if you or anybody you know is struggling out there in the marketplace, whether you're in Orange County or not, we'd love to help. Yeah. Um, just provides value. And just if, you, like say, if you're not even in Orange County, we can give you that list of eight. So that way you can go to your agent and say, hey, look, can you help me with these things? Or find one that will. I love it. Right, because that's what we're all about as far as giving. So uh, we love bringing these relevant topics to you each and every week. Thank you so much for watching the Orange County Real Estate Beat. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye.